be Psalms chapter 19. Psalms chapter 19. The book of Psalms, and specifically Psalms chapter 19, tells us a lot about how we should live our life. And that's something that should interest us as a child of God. Not that our works, not that, not that our life is defined by the good works that we do. We don't have a performance-oriented Christianity. God lives in us as we've accepted him. But we should be interested in pleasing God with our lives, in our works, and in our actions. Psalm 19, starting at verse 7, says this. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. <clears throat> the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Look down at verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. What we need to do is evaluate our actions, our words, and our thoughts in light of all of the things that we read about starting in verse 7. What are some of the things that were mentioned in verse, in verse 7? The law of the Lord is perfect. What's the law of the Lord? The Ten Commandments, the Word of God. Amen? The law of the Lord is perfect. Is there anything wrong with, with the Bible? No, the Bible is without errors. God gave the Bible to us. If it came from God, he wants us to read it and to heed it. The law of the Lord is perfect. What about the statutes of the Lord are right? Now what's, a, what's a statute? Anybody have any, any idea what a statute is? Well, a re requirement, commandment, the Ten Commandments are definitely statutes. There's other things in the Bible that say specifically, do this, don't do that. Those are statutes. Those things are right, and we need to evaluate our lives by those things. The fear of the Lord is clean. Verse 9, what is the fear of the Lord? Is this some sort of... Uh, afraid that God is constantly going to judge you? Is that, is that what it's talking about? The fear of the Lord? What is, what is it talking about? What's the fear of the Lord? That's right. God is a just and holy God. It's, it's a fear of the holiness of God and the fact that my life and the life that I can live myself in my own strength and in my own power is filthy rags compared to the holiness of God. That's respecting the fear of the Lord. It endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. We have a book that tells us how we need to live our life. And no matter what anybody tells you, there's a lot of pastors, there's a lot of people that will get up there and they'll tell you, this is the way you need to live your life. And it's because they said so. Well, beware of that. Always evaluate what people tell you. When people tell you how to live your life, you need to go to the word of God and get what the word of God is going to say to you. And I'll tell you, if you seek the Lord in a daily devotional life, if you are praying to God, if you're asking God, what do you have for me? What are you going to teach me through the word of God when I read my Bible today? Here's a question. When you have your time 
with the Lord, and I hope you do every day. It's something that the Lord's really been working on my heart lately to make sure that I do. Do you open up the Bible and do you check off your reading schedule for the day? I'm going to read Psalm 23 through 26 today, and then I'm going to go to work. Is that, is that the way God wants us to read the Bible? One thing that God can, tell, can do for us when we read the Bible, it's like we're reading his word. It's like he's talking to us through the Bible. We need to be listening in our spirit. We need to be listening for the words of God. And God will tell you, if you, if you, if you read the Bible with a, with, a, with a pen in one hand and a highlighter in the other, he's going to make some things jump off that page at you. And those things that he can, that he can show you is going to speak to you what, the way you need to live your life that day. For example, on verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God said, are my words, are your words, are your thoughts acceptable to me, to God? God made me write that down. You know, God expects us as his children to be receptive to what he has to say to us. Because if we're not, if we think that we have it all figured out, we're going to be flat on our face wrong. We don't have it all figured out. But that's what God gives us his word for. Let the words of my mouth. How many words do you think you say a day? When you go around the work day, does anybody have a customer service kind of job? You talk, how many, you, so you talk for, talk for your job? Okay. How many words do you think every one of us say every day? How, how about our speech, our conversations with each other? Do you build up or do you tear down? Do you talk about people behind their back? Do you have encouraging words for other people? Or are you interested in the latest gossip, the latest social media trend, the latest viral cat video? <laughs> Is your words with the words that you say to other people acceptable to God. Evaluate about it. Think about it. Meditate on it. What about the words that you say when no one else is around? He hears those too, doesn't he? And I'm talking to myself when I say this. <laughs> what about when you're going out the door and your foot kicks something and you wind up flat on your face on the front steps and coffee all the way down your <laughs> your clothes and you're on the way out the way to work, what comes out of your mouth? Have you thought about that? God wants those words to be acceptable to him too. And I think that all of us would struggle with that. When we get angry, remember, when we get angry, God expects his words to be acceptable to him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart what is the meditation of our heart? Our thoughts. So not only are we responsible for the words, but the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if you want good to come out of your mouth, you have to have good in your heart. And God has to put that there. We can't put it there ourselves. So we put good in our heart by being receptive to the word of God. It's very simple. It's something that David understands. The meditation of my heart. God expects us, as we read his word, to think about it and to think, how can I apply what I'm reading to my life? Are you dead spiritually? I struggle with this. When we get up and we go through a routine and we, we read the Bible, we say a few words of prayer, stumbling on ourselves, repeating ourselves, not really listening to what God has for us. God has a very special message for each one of us every single day, but we have to listen for it. I'm talking to myself too. I'm preaching at myself when I say that because I don't always listen for it and I miss it and I go through my day without having it and without hearing it. But meditations, 
of my heart. What kind of thoughts do you have about someone else? Do you have pure and acceptable thoughts in your mind that nobody else knows about? Do you have pure and acceptable thoughts about other people? Do you have a grudge against somebody? Are you offended at something somebody's done to you 20 years ago? Well, those are meditations of your heart. And God wants us to bring those meditations into acceptance with him. Let God speak to you. What kind of other meditations could you have? We need to have pure thoughts, don't we? We need to be feeding our minds what's pure and holy. Not what the world has to pump into our minds through, through the TV and through the commercials and through the social media trends and through every viral Facebook video. And, you know, the world is going to put things in our path. And I find that as a, as a married man that's, a, that's attempting to be pure and holy, even getting on Facebook and scrolling, and you see things on the side that are going to pump worldly thoughts and worldly meditations and impure thoughts and meditations into your mind. And we have to be on guard about that. You really have to be on guard about that. Because if we're going to have acceptable words, Psalm 1914, this is just a life lesson here. If we're going to have acceptable words and acceptable meditations in our heart, we have to bring those before God's throne. And he has to be the one in control. And if God says, don't do this, if God says, don't go there, then we need to listen. God's not going to lead you wrong. If, you're, if you want to go somewhere and you know that what you're going to be presented with there is going to be counter to the word of God, it's going to be counter to having and fostering acceptable thoughts and acceptable meditations in your heart, then don't go there. And you know what's even what's even more, what's even better than that is that God will tell you, if you're listening, to not go there. Sometimes we put our own desires in front of what God wants for us. And we say, I'm going to go there anyway because that's what I want. You know, some of these movies that are shown in, in theaters, you got to be careful what you, what you go watch. I'm not going to say don't over go watch a movie. I've done it. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's things that I've really enjoyed. But, there are things that you'll be exposed to that you need to be on guard against. If you know that there's a movie showing that's going to have filth in it, listen to what God wants you to do. I'm not telling you what to do. God will tell you what to do. If there's something the pastor was saying this morning on the radio, on, on the computer, if you listen to what God wants you to do, he'll say, don't go there and obey that's what this verse is all about. The acceptable, being acceptable in thy sight, in the sight of God who is holy. The meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth. O Lord, my strength. What does it mean for God to be our strength? What does that mean? Well, if David, David is a man after God's own heart. He's the man that God was using to write the Psalms. If David says, God has to be my strength, and he's a man of, after a God's own heart. I mean, I view David as way up here in, in spirituality. You know, Even though he had his problems, he, he had his, his sinful moments, he had his lustful moments, he was responsible for um, the murder of uh, Uriah, Bathsheba's husband. He was a sinner. He messed up. But I still, David... Man, I forgot so hard, man. He's up here. I'm over here. David said, God has to be my strength. David can't even do it. Okay? And he's the one that God used to write the Bible. How much more than if David says, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength. David needs the strength of the Lord. I need the strength of the Lord. We all need the strength of the Lord to accomplish his will for our life. We need the strength of the Lord to have acceptable thoughts. We need the strength of the Lord to have acceptable words in our life. It's a life lesson. It, it will change the way that you live your life from day to day. If we can remember, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. 
You know me. You know when I sit down. You know when I rise up. God knows everything about you. So why not submit our mind, submit our heart, submit our words to him? Because God wants to give you strength. He wants to give you success in this area in our life. God doesn't want you to be in bondage to sin. He doesn't want you to be in bondage to wrong, impure meditations. He doesn't want you to be in bondage to a grudge. He doesn't want you to be in bondage to being offended. He wants to give you strength and to be your redeemer in every area of your life. Won't you let him? Won't you bring your thoughts and your meditations and your words before the throne of God and say, God, I give these to you. I'm going to make it a point to listen for your voice. In the morning, when I read my Bible, I'm going to listen for what you have to say to me and I'm going to obey. Because I can't do it of myself. Of myself, I'm filthy rags. Of myself, in me dwells no good thing. I am unable to have pure thoughts. I'm unable to have acceptable words without the strength of God. Give it to him and let him give you the strength. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the, the lesson from Psalm 19. I pray that you would help us in this area to submit our lives to you, to your control and to your strength. I pray for Pastor tonight as he's not feeling well, that you would uh, bring him back on Wednesday for our Bible study and those, the many people that are very sick in our church tonight, that you would have your hand of blessing, hand of healing, that you would bring us through this, uh, the last of the winter weeks as the weather warms up and help us to, that you would, ju you would just help us to, to gain health and um, that you, gain strength, bring us back and unify us as a church, bring our numbers, help us to be able to reach out and that you, most importantly, would live through us. And we thank you for everything you'll do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you're dismissed.